Hello everyone, welcome back to the garden today. We are going to take a quick look around, see what's going on. The daffodils are finishing up for the season. They've been blooming about three months, so I'm uh, going to see some of those. But first I wanted to quickly say thanks to King's Yard. This video is brought to you by them. They sent me some super cool bird feeders to test out and see what I thought about them. They did not pay me, but uh, I'm going to give you my opinion of them for sure. Uh, so basically I got this awesome suet feeder. This is a double suet feeder. I absolutely love these types of feeders because I love all of the different varieties. Uh, usually you can get a lot of bigger birds like different types of woodpeckers and uh, things like that. Uh, something other than common kind of house sparrows that you get on other feeders. So the first thing I did was loaded this up with a couple of suet cakes and this thing is very well built. I am so surprised. In the past I've used suet cages that um, broke quickly but this is so sturdy and robust. Unfortunately, I don't know why. I think it was my suet. The birds just, I couldn't, I tried to film them but I, it seems like I was always in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, but I did want to test it against raccoons. I have some very ambitious raccoons. They will get into everything. And I was so pleased with how this stood up to the raccoons. I think with a little more effort on my part, I can definitely keep these raccoons out. But this thing did not break. It was so strong. I had raccoons hanging off of it all night long one night. And... Though they did get one of the suet cakes, they didn't get both of them, which is uh, monumental here in my yard. Because seriously, these trash pandas will get into everything. I don't know how to stop them, but what are you going to do? I don't know. I guess the only option would be taking it in every night. Uh, the other feeder that I got is this super cute one. It looks like a little schoolhouse or a little house of some sort. I believe it comes in three colors. Don't quote me on that. But I got the red one. I uh, love this. Seriously, adorable. Uh, looking absolutely adorable hanging out in the yard. Uh, as you can see, there are three compartments. There's this clear compartment uh, in the center for like the smallest of seeds. And then the mesh on the right is a little bit smaller. And the mesh compartment on the left is a little bit bigger for things like, you know, maybe some peanuts or something like that or sunflower seeds. Uh, I like that selection. I like that I can put different things in to attract different birds very cute the top of this just pops off the top kind of roof so you can fill it with seeds and it seems to be sturdily constructed just like the other one um i really really like these um again i was had these out in the yard and i was standing there with my camera I was waiting for birds i'm just i don't think i know how to film birds um i don't know i tried my best i did manage to get a couple of sparrows flying to this. Um, now that I'm posted this video, I'm sure the birds will flock to it just like they always do. Uh, now that I'm not sitting around waiting with my camera like I'm a member of the National Geographic team or something like that. Um, but overall, just a very cute, very good quality. And I'll put the links to those down in the description below if you want to check them out as well. I think I am going to go back and order some hummingbird feeders from them. Um, if the quality is the same as this, I'm sure I'll be pleased. I love hummingbird feeders. And I just saw my first hummingbird show up to the garden yesterday. So I guess that is a sure sign that spring is pretty much on the way. So let's get back to the garden. Um, things that are in bloom. The first daffodil that I wanted to show you. Um, this is a double. I believe this double came from Brent and Becky's. This one is called tender beauty it is very much a double white and in the center you can see it's kind of a beigey pink color those open up a really beautiful shade of pink when they first um when they first bloom these are weathered a little bit these blooms you see here have been open a few days but that is just the softest color pink that you wouldn't even believe i really like them next we have one called steph this is one that I've kind of been hiding from everyone sometimes when I find a daffodil I like. I kind of keep it to myself for a season uh, because honestly, once people like Floret and other popular real flower farmer vloggers and stuff find a variety, um, then it becomes sold out and you can't get it anymore and it bums me out. 
So, uh, I mean, you saw it here first. Steph, it's gorgeous. You better get you some. They're from Brent and Becky's. You better get you some before somebody else finds them. That's all I'm saying. Um, next is Peaches and Cream. This is another one that was new to me. Also, you can see it was extremely windy when I filmed this video, like gusts 40 miles an hour. So if my camera shakes or if something goes a little wonky, I do apologize. I tried to edit it all out, but sometimes my computer is uh, just like slower than molasses and I have to give up. Some of the tulips have rebounded. Um, most of them look kind of bad, but some of them, you know, some of them did okay. The deer have found them. The deer have been stopping by and munching on them occasionally, which is fine with me because I'm so overwhelmed this year uh, with moving and stuff. I haven't had hardly any time to pick flowers. The ranunculus bed is in full bloom. They are getting absolutely blasted with strong wind, uh, but they're faring pretty well. Again, you can see that I haven't really had time to pick many flowers, unfortunately, from the bed, uh, but there's just tons of stuff on my plate. I still haven't even, you know, I still haven't even gotten my roof of the house fixed since the storm. So I'm just sitting around with a tarp on my roof and no car. So I'm just trying to get it back together. This tulip is astronaut Andre Kuipers. Don't know if I'm saying it right. Probably not. I never do. Uh, but I used this one in an arrangement with some ranunculus and some tender beauty and stuff. Uh, daffodils, I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous. Of course, this is the time of year where I don't personally have much filler foliage type plants. I know some people don't like the look of just a bunch of focal flowers in a vase, but uh, I'll be darned if I don't like it. I think it's very pretty. I like this color palette, very orangey and soft. I don't know which ranunculus these are specifically. I just grew a amandine mix this year. So, I like it. I think it's nice. I also made another flower arrangement. Uh, this was a mix of pink ranunculus, mainly porcelain. Amandine porcelain is what you see here. Uh, it's a light pink with that variation of the darker colors around the petals that you see. And, of course, ranunculus are my favorite. I, I mean, I could just put a bunch of these in a vase and go on with my day and feel pretty good about it. Uh, but I did decide to add some tulips. I believe these are... These purple ones are sane or sani. I'm sh again, I'm sure I'm wrong. I apologize. Anyway, and I threw in some daffodils, some unnamed daffodils that I'm not quite sure what their names are. If you know the name of this daffodil, let me know in the comments because unfortunately it was unlabeled when it came to me in the garden. Anyway, it's kind of a weird color palette to stick the yellow in there like that, I think. Um, it doesn't translate very well on camera. This yellow burst from the daffodils looked a lot better in real life, for real. So hopefully, I don't know, it just didn't work out well on camera. That's really about it for this video. I know that it was a quick one. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch. Links to everything are down in the description. I hope that you're having an amazing day. You totally deserve it. Hope your weather's nice, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!